In a Manhattan court, a trial is taking place that has attracted the art world's attention. The trial is about a painting that was believed to be by the famous artist Mark Rothko and valued at more than $8 million. Or at least it was right up to the moment it was discovered that the painting is not by Rothko, but is in fact a fake and worth, well, a lot less than $8 million. To learn more, we called up Noah Charney. He's the author of a new book on art fakes. Mr. Charney, describe the painting for us, if you would. I gather it's actually in the courtroom there, propped up next to the witness stand? It is. It's a large scale work on canvas. It's red and black, and it's abstract the way we think of most of the Rothko works. Certainly, in terms of style, it looks like an authentic painting by Rothko. Now, it must be an awfully good fake. I was reading through some of the reports of the trial, and one columnist wrote, It's so good it almost looks as though Rothko was guiding the painter's hand. Apparently, it was good enough to fool the buyer, who was none other than the chairman of Sotheby's, the best known art auction house in the world. It's an interesting question because knowing whether an artwork is fake is a centuries old problem. Sometimes, Painters of fakes become more famous than the original artists whose style they have copied. And so, as an object, it's an absolutely beautiful one. Are fakes getting better? Fakes might be getting better, but they wouldn't have to be. And this is where it's a little bit complicated. There has always been too much dependence on expert opinion, which is subjective. It's not good, but that's what people still rely on. So, when experts say that this is original, people are inclined to believe them. You mean an expert like the owner of the gallery that sold this painting? Exactly. And so there's a dependence and a sort of general agreement within the art world that has existed for centuries now. That says, you know, if we say this is genuine, it is to the best of our knowledge, and that's that. There are two other things to consider, though. You can do research that looks at the documented history of the object to see if it matches what we see on the surface. And then there's scientific testing. And very few fakes would pass scientific tests. But they don't have to, and painters of fakes know this. If it looks pretty good, and if the history of the artwork appears convincing enough, then it will almost never be tested scientifically. Any idea what will happen to this painting at the end of the trial? I would like to see it survive and be put on display in a museum as a fake for educational purposes. But some countries require that fake artworks be destroyed. And that's a shame because it's a beautiful object and it's something we can learn from as long as it does no harm and doesn't trick anyone in the future. All right, that's art historian Noah Charney. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.